Hello beautiful Pisces. Welcome back to Intuitive Energies. And yes, you're not dreaming, you're actually seeing the Starship Enterprise if you're a Trekker. This is the uh, NCC-1701D. It actually belongs to my son. He left it downstairs. I don't know why he had it down there, but he left it down there and I brought it to my office. So, shh. He does not. Let's see how long it takes him to figure out it's missing. Um, <laughs> Shouldn't have left it down there. <laughs> Alright, so today we're looking at the before and after. I'm just going to put it over here for now. I'm looking at the before and after of this week, Pisces. Okay? Um, I see the Five of Pentacles and I see the High Priestess. I feel that there's a very different path between these two. I feel feel that this has been you scaling maybe the mountains by yourself. Um, Five of Pentacles is about being alone, about being on your own. It's about sometimes feeling alienated and apart, very disconnected from the pack. Okay, You see this wolf here is very disconnected from the path, pack. It's a little bit um, sad really. It's um, I feel with this card that it's a it's scarcity thinking, it's anxiety, maybe isolation. Um, some of the stuff you're doing now is isolating and trying to get a better view, a better um, perspective of it, especially with the hermit, but it's not of the same kind. It's more of this right here. Okay, I feel that you're looking at your before and after and wondering if you're going down the same road or maybe the same path, but they're very different. This is usually what you feel when you're disconnected from spirit, when you're, when you feel that your human life, that's it, that's all there is and you know, when you're gone, you're done. And like you're completely alone and disconnected from everything, right? Um, but you're not. You're really not. And this right here is to tell you, I mean, it's brought you back to water, back to intuition, back to the moon energy that belongs to you. So I feel it's maybe been a long road um, I feel that they're connected as in the voyage that you've had to take, the things that you've had to um, overcome. But absolutely, I feel that you have overcome them. Okay? What a difference a state of mind makes, especially when you don't let that mind take over. And I talk about that a lot um, to a lot of people. Okay? If we could just get past the limiting stuff that we put in there, we could do a ton of, of forward momentum. I mean a ton, you know? Yeah. Celebrate all the victories. All the small victories that you have, celebrate them all. Enjoy them, embrace them, make them yours, make them last. Um, I talked about this a little while back where um, we don't enjoy, we don't celebrate our victories nearly as long enough. We don't give us, uh, give ourselves a pat on the back and stay there and think, you know, you're all that in a bag of chips. And we should. We really should. Um, but we don't. We don't. So make it a point to do it. Right. Don't look at everything by the scales that have been put in before, okay? Um, this is a card of fairly compensated, and they're telling me in no small measure here that I, I, the sword here makes me think that it's a, of a mind thing. So right away I'm thinking is what is out there, right? Um, rules that have been put out there by 
people, of course, who invented it, and then that we just live by. And I'm not saying break the rules. I mean, like, um, you know, success is defined by how much money you have in the bank, that kind of thing. Um, and if you don't have it, then you judge everything by these scales that have been already imposed or put out there, right? Um, but the definition of that, it, I mean, if we really, if you look deeper, if you turn it around and you see, okay, the shadow of it, you see the real shadow, I always like that in this justice card, you'll see that that definition is skewed. Because yes, success can be def defined by how much money you have, but maybe it should be put as how much money you need to feel secure. If you put it that way, one person may need, you know, um, $20,000 a month to survive, and another may be okay with a couple, okay? So, and that makes them rich, that makes them successful within their own. So, dig deeper, don't live by the general meaning of everything, um, and that's what comes through with this. It's that before you equated being alone and, you know, like, what made you successful, I'm, I'm anxious, I'm, I'm alienated because I'm not doing what my family expects me, Ex you know, I, I feel excluded, um, I'm alone because the people in their physical form in my life are not. But when you embraced spirituality and other people like you who are living their own lives, their own dreams, well, suddenly you realize that there's, there's a bigger picture. You're looking far beyond the justice card, right? Back into t intuition and back into um, where we are more than the sum of our parts. So look at everything that way. Look at everything as we are more than the sum of what we hear, see, um, and, and most certainly feel. Okay? So, let's keep a going. Oh, my deck. My regular deck made a, a showing. Let's see here. I'm going to pull from the location for now. already know what this one is. This is the Nine of Pentacles. If you look, you'll see her for sure. Well, I think, anyway. Yep. Yeah, if you... Let me see if I can show her to you. Do you see her there in the outline? Right here in the light? Yeah. So, what you should be concentrating on for the future and intuitively, is working hard at the things that you want. Not what is um, commonly known out there, you know. Um, some can live on a lot less. Um, don't live on the definitions of other people's definitions of love, of other people's definition of what you should look like or be like, of what other people think success is. It is your definition that matters. The nine is about the I, the me. Not the we, the me, okay? The tens are about the collective. They're about the we. This is about the me. So please take the time to really look and find out what kind of hard work you want to put into whatever you're doing. First of all, take it with intuition. Then go within, figure out what you want to do, and then drive it there, okay? Drive it there. Don't leave it on a shelf. Don't have... Um, don't let doubt take over. Take the time to figure out and do it. And look at how beautiful, how beautiful and luscious this looks in the background. It's most definitely what you've got waiting for you, okay, when you take the time to figure it out. What is this one? Okay. So, this is the Ace of Swords that I wanted to come out. It's kind of a gray card, but you can see it right there, right? You see it in the outline? So, 
the mind is only supposed to let you have that breakthrough. But the breakthrough is not a luscious field. It's not, it's not anything. This card is kind of gray and sad, really. So the breakthrough comes, it's the fruit of the mind, because you can even see it here. See how luscious it is here? Um, it's coming out of this mossy place. See, so it's poof. It showed up and there it is at the top. It's like it came out of the ground and went, I have an idea. Um, but that's all the mind is there for. It's not there to alienate you. It's not there to make you feel bad. It's not there to separate you. It's just there to bring in the breakthrough and then lead you, help lead you forward. That's it. Um, the rest of the time you're doing it, of course, from the heart space. We're talking about that heart space, heart space, heart space. Okay. And again, it's coming in tomorrow as well. Heart space, heart space, heart space. Okay? Um, don't forget that you are switching up the energy. You're not leaving it here. You're bringing it into here. Heart intuition. Okay? Not alienation, insecure, um, feeling bad, worrying. Um, lack of security. This is this is lack of security too, right? A very base chakra in the early years where you're unsure of things. All right, so we'll take some more from this this deck. Yeah, the Four of Wands I wanted to come in again. Okay, just kind of fell on the ground here with a bunch of cards. Oh yeah, there you go. From disconnect to connect. From disconnect to connect. Right? From standing your ground and defending yourself, which has a lot of that feeling with the pentacles, to reconnecting with the water. Again, it's... You see, you had that one sword here. This is the breakthrough that happened, right? It came through. It's like, these are all the same. And this one, it's so funny because it's its not a sword, it's a wand, but it looks like a sword. And it's a wand. It is a wand, but it looks like a sword. It can be a sword. It can be a sword, Pisces. Okay? Maybe that's the whole point. That's the whole point. I've been telling that to people for days now. When you're a kid, anything can be anything. A stick can be a sword that you're fighting with. It's just in the way that you imagine it and the way you think of it. So, don't restrict your thinking. Don't restrict your energy field. See things as different things. Play with the angles. Play with the perceptions. Um, you might find you come out with ideas that you have never thought of before. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case you were, you know, wondering. There's a rabbit. There's a rabbit out of the hat, Pisces. There it is again. I'm going to push that so that you can see it. There's a rabbit out of the hat. You are seeing it. You are getting it. Absolutely. Okay, so maybe we put it on this side. See? See it in a different way. In a different way, beautiful Pisces. Triumphant success is what it says on the card. I feel like a party. I mean, even, you know, success. Hey, yay, let's enjoy. Let's let's make it worthy. Let's make it worth it and worthy. Hmm. 
Oh, 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 they all wanted to come out. Okay. So you go from deception and envy. This is most certainly the Seven of Swords. To authority, which is the Emperor. This is going to sound weird because I don't usually do this in the readings. I haven't done it in a while. But what I'm actually getting from this is there may be an authority figure that's very in, got a negative um, kind of or was a very negative hold on you. And I'm going to say that this is, um, there's a message here for you. Here. Um, it could be one of my regulars. I, I, I just I just feel that this is somebody who's like unbending, doesn't want anything to change. And, you know, an apple is never going to be anything else but an apple. And that's okay. Um, but he's not seeing that it can be an apple pie or apple custard or apple, you know. It's just going to be a straight up apple. Um, and... They may feel envious, and they may feel that you're being deceptive by trying to find, what do you call, a different angle or a different point of view. You know, but these pillars are also speaking to me. They're kind of transparent. They're nothing to be really, mm, you know, worried about. Um, I feel more that the unbending, the structure, comes from this individual or this energy. For others who are just don't have that, it may be some kind of authority figure or structure that was built from before that has been keeping you in this kind of, you know, separated energy. Um, yeah, I definitely feel that. And I feel that you're done with it, too. I feel that you're um, taking the mask off. You're done You're done with the, the ridiculousness of, of some of this. And you just want to move forward now. You want to change it. You want to make it into something that's going to work. Okay? What's the use of holding on to old stuff that really doesn't serve a purpose? Right? It doesn't serve a purpose. Think outside the box, Jane. Think outside the box. These are non-reflective cards. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that, Pisces. We have got it. We have done it. Okay. So, let's take... Um, let's take this. Let's pull another card right here. Oh, protected by angels. You're cherished by the angels. Another personal message, I think. Go deep, explore your roots. Yeah, okay. So we're going to put that right here because that's, I feel this is right here. It's either somebody who is repressive or somebody that did repress the way that you thought. Um, they probably, sometimes they didn't mean to do it. It just, it was what it was, right? You get thought. They um, passed down to you the way they were raised, um, how they were thought things. And a lot of times they don't, mean to cause any harm they're just doing the best with what they had but sometimes we they get so um quite literal in in going from one generation to the next we've got to pass this down generation to generation it's almost like um they're showing me the monarchy right where you can't marry the divorced person you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do you know there's there's all of these things it's like also the 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 certain religions, right? Uh, priests can't get married. They can't have mates. You know, the stuff like that. Some things need to change with time. Some things need to evolve. 
and I feel that this is something that um, this is saying go deep explore your roots find out what's making you or what defined you to kind of slow up and not not grow in the past okay the protected by angels is a personal message, but I'm also feeling it with the high priestess. I feel that now that you've tapped into your um, spirituality, you're feeling a lot more openness um, to what is. You, you've kind of opened that door and made it really good. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Let's take from the Tarot of Oneness. Hmm. I love this Two of Swords. Because that's what, that's what this reading made me feel like. It's like you were in separateness to wholeness. And one was the mind. And now it's the heart. Do you, do you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. One was how the mind was making you see it. And now you're going to go through the door of the heart. You had two choices. Usually the Two of Swords is about being uncertain of the choices, but I don't think you're uncertain anymore. I think maybe at one point you were thinking it's more important to be sensible and of the mind. You think that being of the mind is sensible because it's the safe route, right? And being of the heart is not being sensible. And we've been, that part has been really uh, brought in um, many, many, many times. Um, you know, the mind reigns, the heart is foolish. And maybe for certain things, of course. Um, but again, it's it's like, um, it's a truth that doesn't really hold, um, as they say, doesn't hold its water. Because the containment of the heart and the heart energy that comes out is, it's everything. And if you disconnect yourself from that, you disconnect yourself from very many, many things. I don't feel that there's a disconnection anymore. Like I said, this week is heart, soul, spirit. I, I feel like it's your heart's directly connecting to the soul. The strength card this year is, is going to be all about surmounting all of this, having the courage, um, following the instinctive drive, which for me is, is, um, is your gut. Your gut is your guide, is, is spiritually motivated. Okay. It's working with the wild or what you consider the wild part of you. Um, and finding the balance between what was previously just run by logic all the time. Okay? It's to find the balance between that impulse and the logic, the the middle ground so that it leaves room for you to get things going instead of being stuck. It's how to increase the personal power um, and to focus on your inner strength. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else we can get here. So, okay, into the unknown. Again, I feel the Two of Swords here, but also the Seven. The seven that's coming in, that that deceiving, right? I feel that you're no longer in the dark. You're no longer in the dark. All of these right here, they're coming in together. Okay? You've put 
those beliefs away. Okay, you don't want to be doing this anymore. The Two of Swords, usually the person is blindfolded. You're picking the heart and you are going into the unknown. It's It feels like the unknown to you because, um, well, it's nothing you know, right? It's not what you've been thought. You've been thought to be careful. You've been thought to be uh, grounded, uh, you know, go to what you know. Go to what you've learned. Um, it's time to learn something new. It's time to explore something bigger, uh, better, more wonderful that's going to stretch you. Okay? And metamorphosis. Another seven, by the way. Rabbit <laughs> out of a hat, for those of you who know. Um, yeah, it's about change. It's about changing for the better. It's about changing into your spiritual st self and leaning hard on that. Leaning hard on those things that we haven't been leaning on. The things that we've been kind of denying and not paying attention to. It's time to really pay attention to them now. Okay. So the card of metamorphosis says, you're in the process of deep and beautiful change. Butterflies earn their wings through great effort. The process of change is often painful. For it's never without losses or in sacrifices. And if you're going to transform from one form to another, there's a part of you that's going to need to, to die, right? The old part. And letting go of that isn't easy, especially when you're used to thinking a certain way about life or how you live it. Just like a snake sheds its dead skin or a caterpillar dies so that the butterfly can be born, you're required to release your old ideas, your old stuff, and embrace change. It's necessary so you can live your best life. Maybe you're letting go of stuff like low self-worth, um, relationships that are draining, unhealthy habits, um, negative brain patterns. And despite the scariness of it, the fear, you've got to face that Right now, you're going through major transformations. Okay? With the Strength card, come transformation. I know it's not a death year, but other cards have very much that transformative type deal. Especially, um, especially when it comes to getting the courage, spinning the wheel, um, getting perspective, bringing back balance. They all bring in change. Maybe there will be some loss involved when it comes to all of this, but definitely with it may come some stuff that you absolutely love. Long awaited, long needed changes that have just been waiting to make their appearance, their, their introduction to your life. Let's look a little bit into, into the unknown. I want to see. It says, trust and all will be revealed. Life is an adventure. We all know that. And often new opportunities are going to come up and, and you won't know how to handle it. Maybe this is one of those times. Maybe it's time for you to trust yourself and trust this new phase and let it reveal the wonders and the miracles that they can offer as you're stepping into this unknown territory. Imagine you're like a pathfinder, right? You're not just a pathfinder, you're a path maker. 
Trust in yourself to know where you're going and that you'll be safe. Okay? Trust yourself to, to enjoy looking for new adventures and treasures and life experiences. I like this one. All right, so you have protected by angels. It says you are cherished by the angels. I wanted to read this one because it came in kind of like, eh, along with the high priestess. I feel that intuition in all of these readings keep coming up like, uh, um, it keeps showing up like the odd man out, you know, like you have a, you kind of have a flow and then they go intuition and you're reading something that's like intuition and it's almost like it's all, almost like reminding you to tap in, tap in, tap into your intuition, make sure that it's working, right? And it, it feels like it's always accompanied by the strength card. It's like strength, intuition, strength, intuition. You're blessed. Immense blessings from above are showering over your life. The angelic realm is only a thought away. Angelic intervention is available to you at all times. Simply be open and you'll feel them. This is the time to spread your wings and soar. You're protected and so safe. It's like they're saying, just go ahead and do it. You're protected. You're blessed. This is your time. I'm hearing from my guides is saying there's more opportunities now ever to take a chance. If you look back, what they're talking about is if you look back in years before, there wasn't that many opportunities to try and fail without being it a catastrophic fail. You know what I mean? Like you can still work and still try, you know, um, a side hustle. Side hustles become ways of life. We didn't have that 30, 40 years ago. Side hustles were hard to come by, not without a, a lot of physical labor involved to them, you know, paper route or, you know, delivering papers in the middle of the night. I remember doing that, you know. Um, it, those were very time-consuming and labor-intensive. Now you can do stuff off of computer, you can, you can be a... a uh, tell a person, you know, like answering calls. You can do all kinds of stuff on the side. You can write a blog. You can write a book. You can self-publish. There are so many opportunities. And I feel that's what they're saying. Whatever you're thinking about, especially career-wise, okay? I'm not talking relationship-wise. Um, but then again, you know, relationship-wise, you should always take a chance when there's a possibility of great happiness. This came from them directly should always take a chance where there's a great possibility of happiness because you'll never know if you don't try. But for, you know, life path, life purpose, career path, etc., etc., because those two are starting to become very, um, there's a synergy be t behind them, life purpose and career. It's, it's like a thing that's kind of getting all balled up together now. Um, now is the greatest time to try. Um, you can try it, you can fail it, and nothing really drastic happens. You just try something else, right? Until you hit upon something that clicks with you. So it is a great time to try something. It's, it's a great time. Okay, don't talk yourself out of it. I would suggest go see, um, go find YouTube. Go see how people in the 80s live, 70s, whatever. What was, what was available and how much harder you can imagine it would be for somebody um, then to try and completely change their life path into something that wasn't mainstream. Okay? It was tremendously difficult. Tremendously difficult. So go see how much blessings opportunity and how grateful you can feel and then let it inspire you to take action. Okay? I'm just going to say that. If you're my age, you can do it. Sometimes we forget just how much harder it was before. Okay. All right. So we're going to pull from the seven oracles. The seven energies oracle. I guess what it's called. Please don't hesitate, Pisces, if you have questions of what the decks, the names of the decks are, and you would like them. 
Um, I'd love to offer you an affiliate link. It doesn't cost anything um, more for you, but it actually helps me if you use them. Shining through. Look at this. Beautiful. This is a gorgeous. And I'll pull another one here. Sacred Reverence. Forty-seven. Not surprising. Eleven. I felt it with the protected by angels. I felt the one, one, one. I've been seeing one, one, one a lot. You have three here shining through. Feels a lot like uh, the hermit um, shining a light. Also shining through to your your pentacle. Your um, you're becoming your, the fruits of your labor by you know really planting and and becoming the best version of self. Um, hmm. What else do I feel out of this? I don't know. I feel like you're you're blooming, actually. There's a lot of blooming going happening here, especially for you. Even if you're not feeling that from other people, you are definitely feeling. Okay? Yeah. Being authentic to yourself. Have pride in who you are and what you believe in. Okay? Shining in the world and refusing to be small. Let yourself shine. Because like I was talking earlier, there's some that are going to want to kind of, you know, tell you to, you know, just stay between the lines that have been established already. Okay? You can't go here. That arms cross. This is stability, but it's also very constrictive. Okay? So... It's time to step into your true power and essence, your authenticity, okay? And you're required to bring everything that you are. Bring all that you are with you. Everything you've learned, everything you've experienced, everything you've integrated, and offer it up to the world. Somebody what's once told me, and I'm gonna try and say it right, but I'm I'm in spirit, so I'm not sure. Sometimes I feel like it shuts off my brain. Actually, um, something about find find out what the world needs, and then do that. In other words, find out where there's a hole, where there's a need, where there's a yeah a gap. In, in something that the world needs and then you fill it and fill it with be excited about it it make it something that you want you know it's that saying like you sometimes you're looking for something or something's and you're going god I wish there was something like that why can't I find that bingo you're looking for it maybe you're passionate of what you're looking for and you're not finding it Maybe that's an indication that you should be the one providing it, right? If there is a need for it, that would be the question. Is there a need for what I'm looking for? Uh, will other Are other people looking for it? And then you go for it, right? Something like that. This has came in, so this is for some of you who've had that experience recently. In other words, you've looked for something and couldn't find anything. This may be an open door for you, okay? Um, shine brightly and you're going to stand apart. So many people don't shine. They just, they just don't. Either because they're stuck in that same pattern of, they just don't. They don't take the opportunity to shine. So you do. You take that opportunity. Okay. Um, 
I like it because they're talking about this idea. See, that I was talking about it, and I don't know what they're talking about here, but it says, this idea may bring up excitement and genuine pride or discomfort, but this is not the time to make yourself small to avoid the glare of the spotlight and potential punishment by others. Here we go again, right? It takes courage, and here it is again, but know that this is the right thing for you today. It's the right thing for you to do today. You've come so far. You've been in the proverbial back of the room, in learning, gathering mode for so long. And this was an important time, and it served its purpose, but now it's time to step into a new consciousness. Seizing the opportunity, seize the day, Kirby DM, okay? You will be like a loud lighthouse shining through the darkness, illuminating the way for others. Okay? Be careful of the voices in your head that say you can't or you don't know enough or who are you to shine. The better question is who are you not to shine? All you are and all you have become is the grace of the divine. Now it's your duty to share your gifts. Celebrate this. Celebrate. Celebrate. Oh, I can't sing that. Good times. Come on. Uh oh That's it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cool in the gang. I'm sorry I sang part of your song. All right, so you have a sacred reverence. Looking at the world, do you see a limited life or only a limited part? When you look at a blade of grass, do you see just a plant? When you encounter a puppy, do you see just animal? This is categorizing and one way of viewing the world. And we talked about this through this entire reading, right? Categorizing the war world by a defined set of standards. Um, it's only a fraction of the truth. That's absolutely true. It isn't enough. Look closer and you'll observe the luminosity imminent in these living, sentient beings. If you can allow yourself to take all the world, including its spirit, then you see the whole. Reverence is an act of deep witnessing. Reverence is deep witnessing. Mm, I like that. Respect and awe. You experience it when you perceive every being, everything, every plant, rock, tree as sacred and alive. Naturally lean into a state of bliss and harmony and a profound sense of well-being. Whatever the dilemma is for you at this time, try to reframe it with a perspective and acknowledge the spiritual. Again, they're leaning into the spiritual of things. Lean into spirit, lean into your angels, lean into your guides, lean into your past loved ones. Okay? If everything has value, including your most frustrating challenges, would you still ask your question from the same place? Exactly. And I, I've repeated that over and over. Are your challenges bad? Are they a learning experience? They're a great tool to let you know you're in the wrong place. Most likely that. I'd rather that. Can you regard the other as sacred, thereby erasing the separation between you? Embracing the perfection of how you came together is real magic. You're tapping into this unity right now. No matter who or what's in front of you, see that person or thing as luminous and your interaction as holy, then you'll know what to do for the highest good of all. And you'll know to, what to do for you. Okay? All right, so you have the key and you have the heart. There's that green again. We ended with a cup. We began with a cup holding with the green and you're ending with a heart and another heart and the key to it in the middle. Again, you have the key and it goes into this lock right here, okay? You have everything you need. Just go ahead and do it. We were looking at the before and after, lim limiting beliefs to leading a spiritual and heartfelt life. I would much rather the latter. Uh, yes, the latter. Just go forward, okay? Listen to yourself, and when you hit a snag, embrace it, understand it. Look at it, turn it around, look underneath it, look around it, find a way out. Be the observer, be the problem solver, be the one who goes beyond. 
I'm going to let you go with this, my beautiful Pisces. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so very much. I'm sending you a lot of love, light, and blessings as always. Take good care of yourself, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.